what it feels like to be back on fight week again. I'm just here because I have to be here. You're not excited? I mean, this is a big opportunity, a big moment for you. I'm just here because I have to be here. Marshall, man? Yeah, somebody got it. That's cool. <laughs> Finally, come on, you guys. Check this out. It's been five months since my injury. It took a long fucking time for me to be here. They took my belt. They took a bunch of zeros from my paycheck. How do you think I fucking feel? It's all fun and games, right? Yeah. How about being back this quick, man? I mean, this it seems, you're talking about six months ago, knee surgery. I mean, how have you been able to... How have you been able to overcome that in this in this amount of time? Well, I took uh, I went to my academy right before my surgery, right? I had a lot of heat, man. A lot of people fucking saying shit, doing stuff, fucking using my terms. Where's Chapman come do? Where that fucker at? You know what I mean? People want to call me weird, they want to call me cringe, you want to use my shit and not give me credit? Fuck you guys. Straight up. I'm a fucking champ. See this gold right here? I didn't lose my belt. <clears throat> they took it from me. The one thing they didn't take is my smile. So after my surgery, I made a conscious decision to not want anybody else's help that wouldn't want to help me. So yeah, I got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. It's still there. Fucking weighs a lot. But during this whole entire process, I gained so much more than you guys will ever imagine. So you guys can keep watching my social media films. You guys can keep thinking whatever the fuck you want. But ultimately, in the return, my family was there for me. My team was there for me. The people that really mattered, my doctors were there for me, that believed in me, that gave me the opportunities, that gave me the knowledge and the intuition to believe that I can do what I can do and get back in time, faster than what they told me. It took one, one physical therapist, one person I had to meet after my surgery, gave me a condescending handshake, and I put it in my head to say, fuck that, dude. Because they were telling me six months to a year, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it in four. I quit drinking, changed my life around, my garden is great. My kids growing up just like my plants. Mm -hmm. My wife is doing amazing. My academy is well prepared for all the fighters in the world that want to come fight for me. All the sponsors that are, well check this out. I beat every single, almost all the best top notch fights teams that are out there from American Top Team to AKA, Jackson Wink. You name it, I beat them teams. Not only just by myself, I put world class championship teams together myself. So I had the confidence and the knowledge because I've been hurt plenty of times. When you're hurt, you dust yourself off and you get back in the game. But when you're injured, you gotta fucking take yourself out of the game. You gotta sit on the sidelines for a second. And I've been injured a couple of times, not only with my arm, but a couple of different times. So I took that challenge with a grain of salt and I knew I could do it. I remodeled my kitchen, which is awesome. And um, I did a bunch of small different things that made a bigger difference between me and everybody else. I don't have to sit up here and explain. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me fucking talk all day. Because I don't want to hear myself talk all day. I'm just here because I have to be. Is there any concern at all about your physical being conditioned? Because I think people are worried, you know, are you rushing back because this this big car, this big opportunity to be here to maybe be a, a backup for the main event as well? I mean, there's a lot on the line here. Did you feel like there's any concern at all that maybe you rushed it just a touch? Maybe you. <laughs> maybe you guys. But you're not me. I don't expect you guys to think like me because you're not me. I don't expect you guys to feel like me because you can't. All you guys do is sit there behind the cameras and you fucking poke these questions at these guys and really fucking you guys need to be fucking turning the questions around on you. Look at yourselves. Can you do it? You can do it now because I did it. And everybody's changing their game over at the PT offices and everywhere else because they see me do that shit in four months without anybody fucking help. The only people that I had help were my doctors fucking making sure that they were making sure I wasn't pushing the limit. But you guys see my film. The only thing I put out there was what I want you guys to see was all the goofy shit. But all that hard stuff and all that, all that stuff, that pain, suffering, all that crying tears, that wasn't even in the process. Not once did I fucking feel bad for myself in this whole entire time. I saw my kids, I saw my wife, and they were the ones that mattered the most. And I saw that my sponsors were still there that kept with me. And my team that kept with me. I told them I'd be at the academy and those fuckers showed up. And if they showed up, I'm gonna show up. I took the necessary precautions. I took my lot of aqua therapy, man. A lot of water, a lot of contrast. Recovery and wellness is my shit. I know how to heal myself. I know how to eat right, I don't diet right. I know what the fuck I'm doing, but you know what that picture I painted for y'all? Is that cringe or that fucking weird? But y'all keep fucking using my quotes and my stuff and you guys don't give me any credit? The fuck is that? I'm gonna turn this camera on on you guys and say, what the fuck are you guys doing? 
straight up. So when you post those videos, does anybody in your camp or in your close do you go, what are you doing? Because we all watch and we think, what, what is he doing? It seems so risky. It seems so wild what he's doing. Why? Because nobody's doing it? Probably. I've been competing for 30 plus years. I've been cutting away for almost 30 years. I get bored with my fucking workouts. Lifting weights was cool back in the day, man. I'm strong as fuck. You ask any of my guys, I'm, getting, I'm losing weight and I'm getting stronger. I snap into it. That's trademark. That's comp, <laughs> dude. Consistency times effort equals fucking confidence. I'm up here fucking in front of you as a new man. Like a phoenix reborn. I'm on fucking fire, guys. So anybody you fucking put in front of me, has gotta work harder than me. They better run faster than me. And they better fucking hit me in the right spots because if they don't, they're gonna piss me off. So, Hold on, I'm not done yet. Don't be rude. I'm the fucking champ up here. Recognize it. If I got some fucking shorts on, I got my shut off, and I got my cut off, shit, it don't matter what the fuck I'm wearing. You give me my respect. Because I give you guys your fucking respect. I told you guys weren't going to like me when I got to the spot. You guys remember me saying that, right? I'm no pushover, man. I don't expect to be a pushover. I work hard for my stuff. And even when I work hard for my stuff, it gets taken away, which is cool. It's all right. You can't take my spot. And you won't. I've been working my ass off for five months and my team has diligently been there for me. I've lost a really good friend of mine because he OD'd on some bullshit. So when you have different things in your life that happen like that, it kind of sets a different kind of pace in your head. You know, this is a rat race, but I'm no rat. I'm a fucking turtle, ninja turtle. So which one's your favorite? I like Michelangelo. Next question. So you say you're kind of reborn. Do you feel like the injury and stuff was maybe a blessing in disguise? Because maybe if it didn't happen, it'd be your name on that poster right behind you, whether it was... No, absolutely not. Before my injury, I was already in the man. I already quit drinking before that. Nobody saw it, though, because I didn't post it. All my good deeds, I don't post out there because for doing a good deed, you don't post it out there for likes and retweets. You got guys like John Jones taking a fucking chip out, taking a, a chip out of my bag, doing these things. You have a lot of these other fighters. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> because they really do. I donate to these, to, these, to these people that have helped me in a long time, but I don't post it out there for you guys. Why? You do a good deed, you don't post it. You keep it to yourself. You let your family see that. Or you let your little man or your fucking students see that. So that way they can do that for somebody else. They pay it forward. It's called pay. You guys say pay it forward on three. One, two, three. Pay, pay it forward. Y'all fucking lame. <laughs> Seriously, I'm about to be done with this interview. You guys wanted to see me back here, and you guys wanted to like pull fingers. How's he doing? What's his scar look like? What's going on? You know, how's he feeling? I feel fucking phenomenal. I worked out at three o'clock last night lifting weights. I feel fucking strong. You guys got people kicking down on banana trees. Those are the guys I'm fucking preparing for. Not the Anthony Pettises or the short and fucking whatever. I'm preparing for that dude that's that's hungrier, that doesn't get the shot, that doesn't get the notoriety or the media because I'm that guy right there. Somebody's gonna have to prepare a hell of a lot harder for me, for me to lose. But in order for me to like be happy with this stuff, I'm gonna keep winning, man. But if you stack up the victories, will that make you happy? I don't know. We'll keep on trying. We're gonna keep on doing what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to keep setting a positive image for these other dudes. But I'm already done with that. I already tried to fucking do that, and you guys didn't like that. Y'all thought that was cringe or weird. So I said, fuck you. Cringe that. Y para la gente que estuvo contigo, Kukui, los que te apoyaron en tu recuperación, los que te quieren ver de nuevo campeón, a toda la gente de México que también te está viendo. Si luego te entre y le diga, yo estoy el campeón. Es el verdad. Si no, claro. En todo. La otra gente, este, que vive en McGregor, tiene suerte. ¿Por qué no te duele uno por ti, güey? Los esperaste mucho tiempo y ahora tú estás aquí, renacido como el ave fénix, ¿no? Es un tiempo de... es mío. Es mi tiempo. Yo soy mexicano, yo tengo la sangre de puro azteca y mexicano. Yo soy la diferencia de yo y en la otra, porque yo estoy una peleadora real. ¿Quiénes estuvieron contigo? ¿Tu familia? ¿Eres un guerrero? Lo sabemos, te hemos visto la preparación, hemos estado en contacto. ¿Quién estuvo ahí? Para yo, es importante para representar a mi familia y mi gente en una manera muy positiva. 
Yo no soy un peleador, yo estoy en un competidor. Competitor is different, guys. When you go out there and you fight, you're aggressive and you hold everything really tight. I'm a competitor. TF, technical fault. That's a Tony Ferguson finish. <laughs> Straight out, if you guys know wrestling, that's a 15 point spread or a 10 point spread, depending on what your sport or plan. And you go out there and you finish your opponent in style. I've always been known to do that. But this time we're game planning. We used to just go out there with a the raw mold that I wanted to form, fit inside that octagon. Now I'm game planning. Now I'm a much more dangerous game opponent. Now these fuckers are in trouble. Tony, just, the answers you gave at the start of this interview were almost exactly the same as, as Marshawn Lynch in Super Bowl year. He said around that time that the chip, the chip on the shoulder he carried actually made him more relaxed. Everyone thought it made him tense. He said it actually relaxed him. Does that have the same effect for you? I don't know, what do you guys think? Blades and shades, that's what it is. That's the motto, champ shit on me. So regardless of what's happening or what questions are asked, it's not gonna change the way I train. Whatever distractions are gonna be coming up ahead of fight week, I'm already, ha I'm already expecting it. They, they happened my whole entire career. I'm a bartender, right? And I used to sit here and I used to cater to these dudes. I used to know what they would wanna drink before they fucking sat down. I used to know what they wanted to eat because, or whatever, they would come to me with their relationship problems and everything. And I used to give them good advice. Well, it's only until you can take your own advice to do that, which is to leave the bullshit outside the fucking doors. Drop the ego on the door, and you pick it up on the way out. So me, I don't have an ego. I learned how to beat my ego. I beat that fucker up more so no opponent's going to beat me because I learned how to laugh at myself. When you have humility, you can laugh at yourself. You can gain so much more. So I just speak for myself. I don't speak for any of you guys because y'all got problems. You guys are the ones pointing the fucking cameras. Like I said, flip that shit around, ask yourself that question. Four of the best lightweights in the world fighting on the same night. What's great about this sport, you get to express whatever you're feeling. So do you relish the challenge to show that you're the best out of the four of you? Relish. It's a great word. Do I enjoy it? No. My favorite day Sunday morning. The day after the fight. Knowing that all that hard work that you did. And get your victory dance. My victory dance, you know what a victory dance is? You remember watch Independence Day? <laughs> this is got the victory dance. So, check it out. My victory dance is a can of Coke and a fucking bag of peanut butter on the nose. Straight out, because that's the one thing that I want. Right after my fight, I want something sweet. Because how sweet is it to have a victory and have something sweeter afterwards? For me, that's, that's the best. Tony, who do you think wins the main event here between Khabib? Double knockout. I'm going to keep saying it the whole entire time. I hope these bitches knock each other out. <laughs> you talk enough shit, fuck it, man. I hope they deal with the guy to deal with and squash that shit. This is a man's sport. You got to say, we're trying to clean this shit up. But yeah, you got these two knuckleheads fucking going out there making ass out of themselves. So, whatever. You want me to cut a promo? I'm talking to the wrong guy. Talk to these guys. <coughs> Which of the two would you rather face? Anthony Pettis. That's who the focus is. That's who it's always going to be. I'm not going to change my story. It's always going to be the same way. It's the fighter at hand. Everybody wants to look towards the future. I'm like, boys and girls, y'all need to fucking quit looking towards that shit and look at the fucking time right now. Enjoy it. Be fruitful. Be honest with yourself and fucking realize that a lot of the hype and stuff, yeah, we have to fill this hype. But shit, man, people buying this pay-per-view card because they want to see me back in action. Straight up, they want to see how my knee takes. They want to see what happens when I get kicked. Why does it got to take somebody to fucking get hurt for y'all to want to see this shit? Straight up. You know it would be kind of fun to go out there and finish Pettis in a way that I don't even hurt him like I did with Lando Banana? Because the kid was young and he deserved a shot after fighting me. I didn't pull out the blades on that one. This guy, he wants to pose a threat, he wants to talk shit, he knows better. So we're going to go out there as competitors and we're going to handle this like men. Competitively. Do you expect him to, uh, I guess, target your injury? Good. You know how many times I had my leg kicked this count? Take a guess. A thousand. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pretty close. But I've been healing really well and um, do a lot of contrast aqua therapy, a lot of uh, photobiomodulation, some PBM therapy. Well, two over your head. Huh? Yeah. That's the stuff that's weird, right? It's because I'm not ordinary. I'm, I'm fucking, I like thinking. I love 
doing my homework and research on different things. What kind of nutrients can you put in your body? When I started seeing my plants grow and I realized that it wasn't just water and soil that they needed, that they actually needed a little bit of supplements, it starts changing your stuff because, you know, everybody takes care of animals, right? But yet even animals, they, they, they require just a little bit less attention. But you take a plant and you try to fucking take care of a plant, well, I guarantee you about three quarters of you fucking let that shit die because you're too busy and you keep traveling. It's called watering the plants. I diligently tell my trainers, I train trainers, I don't train athletes. Athletes are fucking lazy. I train trainers. I'm a master trainer. I'm a master fighter. But I'm a student, first of all. I'm not a coach. A coach stops learning. He stops becoming a student. He becomes that one guy that's fucking blowing the whistle. That's not me. I'm a trainer. I'm gonna keep being a trainer. I'm gonna keep doing diligent homework so that way I can keep learning this game better than everybody else. I'm so far ahead of the curve. These fuckers are fucking it up. The bottom. These guys are fucking it up. You said that you said that Connor won't mention your name and is avoiding fighting you. Do you think that he'll have to mention your name after this weekend? Probably not. He's a piece of shit. Chicken shit. Fucking terrorist on a dolly. I'm here American Mexican, dude. I have no support from my country, hardly. But it's different, apparently you have to have an accent to have that. It's proper bullshit. Tony, so, I mean, you were, uh, Anthony was the champion when you were kind of on the beginning of this, or in the middle of this winning streak that you're on. What do you make of the 2018 version of Anthony Pettis? Tony Pettis? Tony Pettis? <laughs> Just kidding. <coughs> I think, um, He's a game opponent, man. He's next in line. And I'm, I'm wasting my energy here right now where I should be training. I see I have a bunch of these cameras all over me and I gotta answer you guys' questions, but I'm just here because I have to be. Feel me? Sorry, if Habib O'Connor suddenly gets injured, will you be ready to replace one of them? Will I? Replace one of them. Will I? <laughs> no, man, I'm always ready. You don't have to ask that question. You're new, aren't you? I don't remember your face. <laughs> Has the UFC approached you to be an alternate in case that happens? It's in my contract. So all these motherfuckers that are out there on TMZ trying to talk and saying they're next. No, I'm next. But I'm the first. And I'm the last, too. Are you going to be checking out the quintet on Friday? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, but all my focus is going to be towards the weight cut and all the other good stuff that's here for all in the UFC. So of course I'll be supporting. Tony, what do you like about this stylistic matchup against Anthony? He was pretty excited because you feel like you're a guy who brings it every time. He throws kicks off a cage, I throw Superman punches, it works. Come on guys, your questions are fucking lame. Let's go. Do <laughs> you have any questions for us? No. <laughs> Why is Michelangelo your favorite ninja turtle? <laughs> fucking nunchucks, man. Nunchucks and pizza. And do the goofball. <clears throat> He's got humility on him, man, because he don't care what anybody thinks. He rides a skateboard, he does his own thing. He doesn't have to be the brains of it, but he's pretty fucking smart, I guarantee you. Probably getting fucking be like Raph, a little too Raph. But ultimate reality, though, it's just about having fun. When you're out there tense, it's hard to fucking throw a punch. When you're loose and you're having fun, you're out there doing a the salsa dance like I was in Mexico. And lighting RDL, like a Christmas tree. Tony, I'm sorry, you said something was in your contract. What were you referring to? I don't know, you have to ask management. UFC seems super reluctant to do a 165 belt. I'm just put in the main event for UFC 230. Why do you think they're so reluctant? What was your question again? They seem super reluctant to have a 165 belt, 165 division. I don't know, it's none of my business. I'm 155 and 170 pounder. I knocked everybody out at 170 and started submitting people at 155. I'm not going anywhere else. Make weight. Quit being a bitch. Making excuses. Talgate. How do you finish out to Texas on Saturday? Stylistically, TF, Tony Ferguson finish. I'm not even trying to talk to myself when I'm third person, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you be walking out with your belt? I brought it. You still consider yourself the champion, right? You see my shirt? Goal. All I 
want to see us go like Jordan Burroughs. Jordan Burroughs got offered a chance to go and train with Conor McNuggets, but he turned that fucker down fast because he knew what that was going to do to his value. My value has increased over time and it's still going to increase. So like I said, you guys can keep pointing these cameras, asking these dumbass questions. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is winning in life. Stacking them chips and accolades. Any more questions? Why do you feel you haven't had more support from the Mexican-American community? You're not even Mexican, actually. Okay. Any more questions? Sure. <laughs> I I live in answer. I'm not going to answer that. I live in LA. I'm not allowed on that. No, that's cool. question. Next question. <laughs> you choose to take it. Tony, you admit you have a chip on your shoulder, but what's the source of it? I mean, I, you've been always been fun in the media. Now it's like you're angry at us. Are you angry at the UFC because of you know because of this title situation? And what's the source of that chip? There's no anger. Why? Because I'm just more stern. <laughs> Feels like anger. Well, if you feel like it's anger, what do you think Anthony Pettis is gonna feel inside that octagon? There's no anger. There's no chip. I don't like chips. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a question to ask. Done. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thanks, guys.